Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live at the original epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic? This next title certainly delivers. Welcome to Audiobook Reviews in 5. This is Jana, also known as Yana. And today I'm reviewing Wuhan Diary, Dispatches from a Quarantine City by Fang Fang and narrated by Emily Wu Zeller. Fong Fong is the pen name of a 64-year-old novelist and poet who wrote 60 posts in 60 days between January the 23rd and April the 7th. Between WeChat, which is described as China's app for everything, and Weibo, the Chinese equivalent of Twitter, her posts attracted more than 380 million views while she was quarantined in Wuhan, along with the rest of the city. Although the words lockdown and quarantine are terms many of us throw around casually, even in places where these are actually voluntary actions, Fong's writing illustrates the restrictions that were heavily enforced by government officials in Wuhan. Fong is matter-of-fact about her intermittent access to social media, and she mentions her posts being removed or even disguised to look as though they've been published when in fact they are hidden. And at times, she's completely blocked from these social media platforms. She's very critical of local officials who covered up the outbreak in Wuhan, but she never directly criticizes the National Party in Beijing. And several times, she actually states that she cannot talk about certain subjects. So she simply explains that she will stay silent on them and she moves on with another topic. She also strongly advises that fans of her posts continue to read the mainstream news publications in China to have as much information available to them as possible. Trying to read between the lines to understand what she might actually think of those in the very highest positions of power is impossible, but it's clear that Fong was provoking some deep fears based on the number of death threats and trolling that she receives. I recommend that you listen to the afterword by translator Michael Berry before you listen to or read the rest of Fong's book. Berry shares some useful context about the threats that he received after his role as translator was publicized, which turn out to be a mere fraction of all the threats that Fong received. The sinister implications of this seem apparent on the Goodreads and Amazon sites both feature a number of one- and two-star reviews that mostly accuse Fong of either promoting Chinese Communist Party propaganda or else trying to undermine the party with the lies in her book. Of course, that made me want to listen to this title immediately, so I'm not sure that the reviewers were all that successful in deterring interest. Fong refers frequently to ultra-left trolls and bullies, and this seems to refer broadly to those who want to uphold the most extreme ideology of the Communist Party narrative of victory, especially when it comes to defeating the virus, and then again to save face for the entire country, rather than admitting fault or apologizing. Emily Wu Zeller is an excellent narrator with hundreds of other titles to her name, And here, she's able to convey the situational sense of urgency while upholding Fong's dry sense of humor and direct tone. That said, Barry was under intense pressure to complete the translation of this book, sometimes working for 10 hours a day or more, and it probably could benefit from another round of editing. Although it can get repetitive, it's still a great listen And it's an important historic document as well. Overall, this is a fascinating glimpse of life during quarantine in Wuhan and a rare glimpse of life under lockdown at the epicenter of the outbreak. There are so many simple or personal details that most of us can certainly relate to during this COVID era, like being stuck inside, physically isolated and bored, or scrolling through social media desperately looking for signs of good news, or worrying about 
running out of prescription medication and food. Fong never complains about her lack of meal options, which I was impressed by, and she takes a very pragmatic tone about getting on with life, but she refuses to back down in her demands for government accountability. This title has been banned in China, and I can't help but feel fear for Fong's well-being in the current environment, although she still seems to be living in Wuhan according to some July news stories, and I hope we'll hear from her again. That's all for this episode of Audiobook Reviews in 5. Thanks for listening. If you've not yet done so, please subscribe to Audiobook Reviews in 5 on your favorite platform. By subscribing, you can help increase the profile of this podcast and chances of other listeners finding it. I look forward to checking in with you all again soon. Please stay safe and be well.